Okay, everyone. We are on cyclingnews.com and uh, we are talking about full skein. This is the Dane. He's more carbs, more carbs, more self belief, fuel, full skein success in 2019. Sounds like watching some Duran Rider videos. I know the Danish crew do are a fan of the Duran Rider stuff. Michael Valgren, etc. Written of him a few times. Friendly guy, Michael Valgren, very friendly rider. And uh, carving up. Interesting to note the World Championships. Valgren chose a rim break BMC when he had the choice, not disc. Anyway, that's digressing. Carbs, carbs are the key. We do, we do see a lot uh, of pro cyclists being carb phobic. It's crazy. Uh, I started eating more. He says simply, it's no great mystery, just more carbs, which means more fuel for the races and for training also. And um, he, I don't get the maximum amount of my training, maybe because I don't eat enough. I get home empty or I don't manage to do the last workout in the right way. So this has really taken a, a leaf from my book of carb the fuck up. And uh, with the help of some teams, nutritionists, makes big improvements, blah, 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 blah. Uh, he can train harder. It's been a major change. So the relationships between professional cyclists and food is a complicated one. And uh, so again, it, it, it's strange as a rider, you want to always be skinny, skinny, skinny. You need to be light, you need to be light. I think in the hunt of being light, maybe my nutrition has not been right. Too light, not right, exactly. And um, so basically, what can we say? This goes down here. Uh, I've always been hungry and always been eating, but it's been a question of eating the salad and the vegetables or eating a plate of pasta, rice, and having those things on the side. So... Again, yeah, switch it around, more carbs, less vegetables, greens, salads, things like that. They don't give you any nutrition, really. I mean, vegetables are great as a bit of a vitamin thing, but in terms of, like, power nutrition, to put power down, to push watts, to fuck your girlfriend or, or you know, do shit, get shit done, you ain't going to get that from fucking vegetables. You're going to get that from carbohydrates like rice, sugar, bananas, corn, pasta, quinoa, millet, aromanth, White rice, white rice, white rice, sugar, bananas, ripe bananas, potatoes. And so he's saying, it's just I was hungry sometimes and wanted to eat and ate other stuff, basically. I didn't eat the right thing for hard work. Maybe sometimes you think, ah, tomorrow's an easy stage, which today's not so hard, I'll eat less. Yeah, this, this, I see this, man. This is, I fucking, I did a race in Thailand a couple years ago, a stage race. And on the first day, I got smashed because I was out of shape. I'd done no training. I was lean. I was skinny, I was super low body fat, but I didn't have any cardio because I'd done no fucking training. And, uh, but on the second day, the hill started, and the riders who just dropped the fuck out of me on the first stage were suffering majorly on the second stage. And then the third stage, so many people pulled out. And so I'm beating all these Thai national riders who are putting out, they're fucking gun climbers, man. They're so skinny, so fast, but they don't eat enough for day-to-day -day recovery. And so I ended up finishing ninth in a seven-day stage race. And uh, I won like 800 bucks. And it wasn't because I was fast. It was just because I knew how to eat enough and can handle the bike in the bunch. And I had the stamina. So it was, it was incredible. It was incredible. Um, you know, and I got dropped. I got dropped on every single climb by the big guns when it mattered. But there was only eight big guns left and I was number nine. You know, So I was like the ninth gun. And so uh, it was just hilarious. And I, every day you see these, some of the other riders, like, more and more would pull out. And uh, it, was just cra it was just crazy. And I was just like, man, these guys, I don't look at the dinner time, they'd eat like small meals. I'm like, you guys are dumb, man. Like, you should eat like your traditional, you know, traditional elders eat lots of fucking rice. But um, anyway, that was that was funny like that. And, and oh, man, it's crazy. It is crazy, the cow restriction that some riders do. And then their performance just gets smashed. Just get smashed. There's not much difference between a pro and an amateur in terms of watts per kilo. There's not much difference. The bigger difference is, is how long the, the, the rider can hold those watts per kilo day after day because most riders don't eat enough, all right? And so then they get smashed. A lot of riders have eating disorders, or disorder sort of eating. So there you go. That's, um, you know, that's basically it. That's the carbs, carbs, carbs. Um, we're going to scroll down here and, uh, you know, now we're talking about Valverde, blah, 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 but here's the thing is, so they want to jump to Dr. Ferrari. This is a website called 5312. I used to frequent this back in 20, 2003, so like a long time ago, and Ferrari would, uh, I'll read this in Italian, um, Ferrari would, so he's basically saying here, 
actually you can't really tell, but in this first, he's just basically saying the Specio mi capitano, I'll put it in English, all right, so you can know. <laughs> I could often notice that during training camps or stage races, even with well-known professional cyclists, athletes were not taking enough carbohydrates to regenerate the glycogen stores, utilizing previous efforts. You know, so these are even pro riders listening to their fat coaches. Don't eat too many carbohydrates, carbs turn to sugar, sugar makes you fat. Sugar turns to fucking muscle glycogen. Muscle glycogen makes you push watts. Combine that with EPO, etc., and you're on a winning ticket. What's the point of taking EPO? What's the point of blood donor? What's the point of any of these drugs people are taking out there? Runners, swimmers, cyclists, etc. What's the point if you're not going to have enough fuel so your legs have the power? What's the point of having a high hemoglobin if you run out of table sugar on your bike race? It's silly. Crazy. Crazy. So it takes 10 grams of carbs per kilo body weight, which has I've been spouting for years. Now, hang up, just between you and me, I'll learn this from Dr. Ferrari. Just between you and me. Just between you and me. Um, don't tell anyone else. But anyways, I mean, so just an hour a day of training, of decent training, you, know, you need at least 10 grams a day. So this, this is, if you're a parent out there, if you're cleaning, you're working, you're managing people, you're smashing through carbohydrate, you're smashing through carbohydrate, and you make the biggest mistake, going, oh, I'm not a professional cyclist, I don't need carbs. And so what do you do? You're going to eat lots of fat. And eventually you go, fuck it, give me some Krispy Kreme donuts, give me some ice cream, and that's full of fat. So you're eating all this fatty stuff to get your carbohydrates that your brain needs, that your balls need, that your heart needs, that your lungs need, that your ovaries need, you know? And uh, maybe one of those, you, know, you just, you know, you need to carb the fuck up. Um, you need to carb the fuck up. So it's just, you know, um, you know, he talks about the marathon, midnight spaghetti, blah, 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 blah. We're going to talk about here uh, to the Giro 2005. And we have Paolo Salvadelli. And uh, we've got here down here. And he talks about the watts per kilo, blah, 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 blah. And then he talks about the energy cost. Uh, so did Salvadelli, who Ferrari was coaching Salvadelli. You've watched Salvadelli's cadence and stuff like that. He looked like his Italian version of Lance Armstrong. He's the Italian Lance. Lance Italian strong. And uh, it... Crucial in such circumstances to adequately refuel the engine with carbs and fluids. So did Salvadelli, taking 30 grams of maltodextrin, which is glucose, and, and half a litre of water every 15 minutes of climbing. So he's doing about 120 grams of carbs. This is back in 2005, you know, and I'm, I've been spouting this for the last 15 years. And so people, some people are still, I don't know about that. Let's have a look at why maltodextrin. I'll show you why maltodextrin is good. This is glucose, but why is multidextrin special? It's because its glycemic index is 110. It's 110. And table sugar, sucrose, is only 65. So if you're on the bike, the best option really is multidextrin. That is just going to give you that sugar spike a lot quicker, and it's going to keep you on that sugar high, you know, and you just you don't get off. You just stay on. As long as the sugar's coming in, you're staying on. And as soon as you get off the sugar and you burn through all your sugar, then you don't get a sugar crash, but you're running out of fuel, you're running out of muscle glycogen, and then your watts go down. So people are like, oh, stay away from sugar because you get a sugar crash. And it's like, if you stay away from sugar, you, you've already crashed, man. Where's your carbs from? I eat rice. Well, rice is sugar. That works, but not, it won't work as good as multidextrin on the bike. So, you know, it's just hilarious. That it's, oh, dude, I stick with whole foods. I don't have refined sugar, but... You know, there's no difference in terms, except for the difference is that it goes into your muscles and you recover faster, you can push harder. So it's, it's just dumb to avoid sugar, refined sugars. And here we have Scott in here, we have coconut sugar. It's only 35. So, you know, coconut sugar is okay, but it doesn't give you that full power. And But if you use multidextrin, dextrose, glucose, you know, you notice that stuff gives you that really freaky strong legs. It's freaky strong legs, freaky strong bench press. You know, it's, it's uh, it just works really, really well. And it's got on here, these are the, you know, not so good. Fructose, where's fructose? is down. There we go, it's down here at 25. So it's, you know, it's pretty slow, slow release. So you want a fast release for sure for recovery. And, um, you know, so I live on basically sucrose. Sucrose is my preferred one, um, but multidextrin is also good. It's just cost more money. But, uh, you know, but if I was doing any uh, any serious racing, I would definitely go with multidextrin for sure. That's just the deal. And uh, that's the deal. So, 
you know, but the thing is, I'm not doing any, uh, what's the word, you know, I don't have to take in multidextrin because, I mean, I would for a marathon, I would for a marathon, but I'm not doing anything where um, I'm really running on a sugar like that, you know, I'm not doing that hot, hot that Tour de France level stuff, so uh, if I was, I would do multidextrin, a marathon would do multidextrin, but I don't really do anything where I'm just pushing big, big watts and running out of sugar, I, just, I don't run out of sugar. But in the tour, in the big, if we're in a stage race, the chances of running out of sugar is really, really, you know, you're just burning through so many carbohydrate calories. You're gonna need, you're gonna need the special stuff, the big dog stuff to, to get in there. Otherwise, you're gonna you're gonna sugar crash a lot quicker. Um, so anyway, that's the deal there. Sugars for the win. You know, if you want the best sugar, it's multidextrin. If you want the average sugar, sucrose. If you want the worst sugar for recovery, it's probably fructose. But fructose is important for sperm cells, uh, your testicles, etc. Live on uh, fructose, especially sperm cells. So, a bit of a uh, bit of discussion there. All sugars are great. Some are created more powerfully, and that would be maltodextrin, which is basically a man-made glucose polysaccharide sugar. There you go. Carbs for the win. Been saying it for years. Saying it for years, and uh, full skanks spouting it. Doctor Ferrari spouting it, and you can you can be you know. Link me down below who's doing low carb. No one in the world is doing that as an athlete. You just bonk, you get smashed. Even Timothy Olsen. Remember that Timothy Olsen guy from Munchies Runners? The high fat diet? Even he says he's a bullshit. He doesn't do that. He doesn't do that. He does high carb. Look at his last Instagram post. Thanks for watching. Carbs for the win.